Mike Cornby. Good morning, Rob. Thanks for having me. Great to have you here in studio. I love being here. Jefferson County Prosecuting Attorney Matt Harvey. Good morning. And he ran out during the break to get his fedora, New York Times bestselling author John Gilstrap. Good morning. It's, oh, is this, is this the cue? Are you going to buck up or not? Okay, well, here we go. Rob and I are fedora free. We are. We're, we're, we're hoping for zone. Christmas yeah. presents. There we go. There you go. I like that There's look. The, That's that, a good yeah, look. It's, it's a good look. All right. It works. This hat kept me warm in Alaska. <laughs> I can see you both riding horses. <laughs> no, you won't no. see me riding a horse. <laughs> I'll ride a horse. I'll ride, I'll ride a horse. I'll bring our horses around tomorrow. We'll have it at the open house. We'll have the two of you on a horse. Open house. There's an open house here tomorrow. Open Isn't there tomorrow. from 11 to 1? 11 yeah. to 1. Everybody's invited. With uh, partially uh, fed by the the boss's wife, Kresha Hornby, making some food tomorrow, as I understand it. Yep. And then the rest of it kicked in by Gilstrap, Height, and Stubblefield. And I, I've ordered the thrones for the three of them. Um, we just can't get them elevated enough for the three of them. <laughs> just use the these. These are pretty good. Just is, yeah, the, the new new chairs. chairs. My Christmas gift via telephone. The city of Martinsburg chief of police, Aaron Gibbons. Chief Gibbons, good morning. Thanks for joining us. Good morning, Rob. How are you? I'm, Sounds like you have a full room this morning. I do. I I got a crew here. That's for sure. Uh, Chief, hey, I will tell you, uh, I am not wearing my fedora today. I am a big Indiana Jones fan. I used nice. to have a, I used to have a fedora, but I no longer wear that. I probably should. How about uh, Michael Douglas and uh, Romancing the Stone? Did you catch any of those movies? I did. I most certainly did, and uh, Jewel of the Nile, all that. But yeah. I'm more of an Indiana Jones fan. Yeah. Well, Indiana Jones is that's a cultural icon right there. Hey, man, that, right? And the remake. That's, that's going to be last part of our new uh, our new uniform. We're going to start wearing fedoras. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then you got to get the whip, the bull whip, and they got the whole thing. And why is it why does it have to be snakes? I hate snakes. Uh, let's, That's right. let's talk about the city of Martinsburg. Recently, uh, Chief, it's uh, been uh, alarming, to say the least, uh, in regards to some of the shootings that have been taking place recently. Uh, is there anything tying these uh, in together? And can you explain uh, exactly what's been happening? Uh, they're not tied in together. The one that uh, happened Friday, it happened just after uh, 12 noon, uh, about 1230. And I will say, I pulled up the, uh, it's a, it's a, uh, computer-aided dispatch report uh, from that call. And that call came in at probably around 1229 is when the actual call came in for a shots fired. Um, and my officers, by the time that they had actually called for a shield, it was about a minute and a half later. So the response time to these incident, incidents are extremely fast. My guys acted very honorably and very bravely. Um, they went right after that threat and this clown that came in from Washington State is uh, no longer with us. And I, I will say 100% these guys saved uh, saved um, at least two, at least one life, probably two lives uh, by running into that into that situation on Friday. Yeah, that's not a natural thing for a person to do, but these folks do that and then they amazingly it really do is, it. And you really have to take care of these guys after a, an officer-involved shooting incident like this. Um, now, inevitably, he did take his life. Um, however, they had cornered him into a position to where he had nowhere to go. So mm -hmm. that is very honorable. Uh, we had a guy that's been here for a year, grabbed a shield and went running in. You know, and that that's not something, you know, Anybody just can do it. It really isn't. But these guys most certainly did do that. I have two. Um, this guy, I'm still still waiting on results back from the ATF to see where this gun came from. Um, I'm, I'm thinking that maybe it came from Washington with him, um, mm -hmm. but I'm, I couldn't say that for sure. You mentioned you have to make sure these guys are taken care of after the incident. Can you tell me what procedures are in place to make sure these folks, uh, the officers that were involved, uh, do have uh, the appropriate counseling and such after these kind of incidents? Yeah, so when I uh, I got the call, I was actually heading to lunch, um, and I got the call. I was down in Inwood at the time, but by the time I got here, the incident was completely over. Um, I walked into the scene, pulled the two guys that were actively um, shooting or engaging in the subject, um, pulled them aside, got them in a room, closed the blinds, sat there and just let them breathe. That's all I want to do. Just let them breathe a little bit, make sure they call their family. That's things that they just don't think about. They don't think about calling family, making sure everybody knows that, you know, they hear this stuff on social media, make sure they call home, make sure everybody knows that they're all right. 
and then give them a few days. You know, we don't take their guns or anything like that. We may switch out their guns, but we don't take their guns. Um, we let them go home, talk to their family, make sure they're all right, and then we get a hold of uh, counseling services in which uh, I did that. Um, we've been in touch with Carly uh, Davis since I became chief, and I've been utilizing her services just for support. So you send them off, and you, they get the clear bill, and they're, they get back to work. Mike? So, Chief, um, obviously we don't live in a big city where this happens a lot. So it, there must be a lot of training that you're doing to, to enable these these officers to take action so swiftly and, and, and positively like that. Can you speak to a little bit about that? This is a prime example. We had a one a guy that's been here for a year, you know, and he's the one that grabbed that shield and went running in. Um, now, there were other officers there. Berkeley County Sheriff's Office showed up on scene. Uh, West Virginia State Police showed up on scene. But um, my two guys that were involved in that shooting, one of them was here for a year, and another one was here for two and a half years. So these are the it it takes a lot of time. It, it takes no time at all for somebody to resign or somebody to move to another department. But for me to get somebody into this building, get them trained and get them certified through the academy, that takes quite some time. It could take easily up to six, seven, eight months just to get them to the point to where they're on their own. Matt That's Harvey. why our turnaround rates are so, you know. It's unavoidable uh, to a point, but, you know, we're, we're short right now. However, we, uh, we have a huge showing the past few testings. Um, we just had, I wanted to pull up our, uh, I'm trying to think. So this last weekend, we had seven pass everything um, this last Saturday. So they'll go into the background phase. Um, we're at 36 right now. So we need, we need uh, 50 officers. Um, so we need, we need 14 people. And we've got just hired two. I've got three in the background phase that are pretty much done everything. And then uh, probably about 11 or so that are going into the or in the uh, background phase right now. So it does take some time and we're, we're making waves. I'm hoping that we'll be up to around, you know, very comfortable staffing levels by, you know, around 46, 47 members by at least midsummer, early fall. Chief, obviously, the uh, officers are to be commended for their for their swift action and appropriate, necessary actions. Um, just so people that maybe that aren't familiar with this story, was there a relationship between the decedent and the occupants of that apartment? Yes, this was a very targeted. Um, this was very targeted. He, this was an ex girlfriend of his. He had come into town tracking her down. Uh, he was after. Her most certainly was after her new boyfriend um and she was there as well so i have no doubt that he was planning on uh causing violence to her as well and uh so yes this was very targeted um he had been with this girl from what i hear about 11 years and when they separated she kind of took off from him but other than that yes this was very targeted as well as the uh one that happened in spring mills the other day on Monday. And the one that happened in Spring Mills, the shooter in that incident was captured in Martinsburg? Yes, he was. So when that call came out, we were all, um, of course, we were all on high alert. Uh, we did not know. I'd seen some reports that um, we, that it was made mention that he was headed towards Martinsburg, but we really had no idea where, we, where he was. All we knew was from the Hedges, Hedgesville area. But, of course, everybody's out in patrol. We're all looking for this vehicle. And it just so happens one of my officers found, uh, saw that vehicle, ran a tag. I was about two blocks away. Um, he made an illegal left uh, there on Burke. He lit him up, and as soon as he lit him up, throws the gun out the window, and we all just pummeled him, <laughs> got him out of the car, threw him on the ground, and we detained him, put him in the back of a cruiser until a uh, county showed up not long thereafter. Chief, is it known why he was in town? Um, I, I have heard say that he was actually intent on targeting someone else, and thank God this is another reason why I swear our officers saved another life on Monday. 
Um, I can't really say. I, I think that's for you know. I think that's for the county to put out um, what his clear intent was. I don't know how much contact they've actually made with whoever he may have been targeting. Um, so I don't want to. I don't want to talk on that right now. Or I really, I really shouldn't talk on that right now. Well, well yeah, and, and, but I can. I had heard that too. I'm not going to say who, but but I heard that he was targeting someone else, and and that's the reason why I brought it up to. Show that, but that if the officers that were true, saved someone if else. If that were true, he was probably about a block and a half away from that location. We're talking about the incident where the the lady was killed in a parking lot, and then the the suspect was subsequently arrested as he was targeting a second person. Is that what I understand? Uh, I, I believe he was targeting a second person. Um, again, I'll let the county put that out if if that's uh, further information that they're that they've already passed along. Um, but yes, he, this was a very targeted incident in Spring Mills as well. This was a domestic-related incident. Um, he had targeted a female up there in the, uh, I believe it was the urgent care. Um, she was. I don't believe that she was an employee. Um, this is just what from conversations that I have heard. And then he made his way into Martinsburg, possibly for another target. So, Chief, do we have does Martinsburg or Berkeley County, for that matter, or Jefferson County, um, do we have SWAT type units? if uh, something devolves into, say, a barricade situation? Yes. Uh, Berkeley County has one. State Police has one. Uh, and we have one as well. Actually, on the Friday incident, they had called immediately SRT the moment they, they uh, heard that this was an active shooter um, just down the street from us. Um, they had called in SRT, and the, the shooting incident was over so they canceled our srt but yes uh berkeley county does have an srt team martinsburg has an srt team it, it's about i believe right now we have nine members on the team um and yeah so and also if you ever really needed it um we have there's a western United state police team that we can utilize as well and you know we've had maryland helicopters come in come into town sometimes you'll see those flying over we've needed those for certain instance instance and we have utilized teams together we've uh there was a place out on winchester avenue about a year and a half ago where uh berkeley county sheriff swat went in the back and we went in the front do you do a lot of training together with the berkeley county sheriff and the uh, west virginia state troopers uh, we do a lot with the Berkeley County Sheriff's Office, whether it's um, coordination-wise as far as SWAT. And now, if you're specifically talking about SWAT, yes, but we do both. Whether it's patrol and or SWAT teams, uh, they do uh, train not as often, um, but um, they do train together. Because there are times when we'll do roundups and they we need to utilize different members from different teams. Yeah, so if like a, a Berkeley County Sheriff uh uh, Cruz is pulling over somebody, and a uh, Martinsburg PD is is in backup or right there. They can coordinate with each other pretty easily. Yes, and that does happen quite quite often. Okay, Chief. Chief, you mentioned specifically that um, you're waiting to hear from ATF about where the gun came from in the, I believe, the the downtown Martinsburg incident. Was there something special ab about the, the the gun? I I had read the news reports that it was a shotgun. Yeah, it was a it was a shot it was a shotgun. Um, when I went up there, it was a, he just that's that's what he had on him was a shotgun. Um, and but whether or not he had actually purchased it here in the state of West Virginia, or if he brought it over here on a on a uh, airline approved luggage, you know, from Washington State, that's where he was from. So um, I'm I honestly am curious as to where and when he uh, purchased that weapon. Chief Aaron Gibbons, our guest here on the program. Did you have a follow-up, Mr. Gilstrap? Um, no, I, this is, I presume this is a fairly, certainly two in such such close time frame mm -hmm. to each other is is highly unusual around here. How many shooting incidents of, of this sort, uh, murder, murder-suicide event, events, do we have in this area per unit of time? We, we do not. We do not have these. Uh, you may get two or two or three a year possibly and that's in the entire county um some you know we'll go an entire year without any murders whatsoever i believe in 2022 we had none maybe it was uh just the prior year but yes this is a very isolated incident this is not a and <clears throat> had a meeting every 
the second Wednesday of every month I meet with, uh, since I came into office, uh, I meet with downtown business owners. And, of course, yesterday was our 2 o'clock meeting. We have it every month. And a lot of business owners, of course, they, this is one of their main concerns. And this is very isolated. This is not something that happens all the time. Usually we get larcenies and, uh, you know, smaller crimes throughout the city, especially downtown. Um, but, of course, that was one of their concerns, and you just have to um, – you have to address some of those concerns and, and come up with some resolutions and some initiatives as far as what what will help people uh, actually go to sleep at night knowing that they are safe. Um, and some of those things were uh, that we had brought up were um, security cameras. Uh, I put in front of council here last, uh, I believe it was in October and November, uh, for new camera systems. So we have... Um, some camera systems going up downtown. Um, hopefully, in the future, we'll have some more. That'll that'll de- t- deter a lot of the downtown crimes as far as petty crimes. But it's it's just one more tool that we be, we'll be able to utilize. Also, we have a um, we're going to uh, we've been working on a policy for a security assessment team. It's uh, three of our lieutenants who's going to go through offer a service to local organizations, businesses, schools, um, community. Uh, City governments, anybody who would request it, they are going to come through your uh, place of business and do a security assessment. We're working on a waiver right now for them, but it's it's very good training. I have two lieutenants that have already been certified in it, and I have one more to go. I think he gets certified in January, and once that's uh, once that's up and running, and we have that policy completely done, then we'll be able to get out and get some of these security assessments done. But that's going to prove very useful because. <laughs> You know, there, there's that, that police mindset of, you know, you sit in a restaurant, you don't have your back to the door, or there's too much glass in the front of this building. What are you going to do if somebody walks in the front of your building? So that's going to be a I, – I, I really think that's going to be a huge success once we get that off the ground. Chief, when somebody has – and I'm not suggesting this applies to either of these cases, but if someone, for example, has a temporary restra- or a restraining order against a spouse or a girlfriend or a boyfriend um, – is is there something they can do, or is there, do you all stop by their place more often to make sure that they're okay? I mean, what what is the process by which they they can they can feel safe yeah. about the bad person not coming at them? Well, not only do they have victims advocates down at the courthouse, but when there are FPOs, they are they are made very well aware that if they violate that FPO. Even if there's not an FBO, let's just say somebody gets arrested arrested on a domestic violence charge, whether it's domestic assault, domestic battery, there is a criminal bail agreement once they make bail on that um, on that charge. And whether they have an FBO or not, if they violate that criminal bail agreement, then they can go to jail if they violate that. Now, do we go out of our way and actually check on that person every other day? We do not. Um, do we? make um we do have domestic follow-ups so if there is a domestic charge then we do uh follow-ups uh with the uh, victim but also that victim is contacted by the victim's uh advocate through the court as well chief aaron gibbons so, yes if there is a violation of an fpo whether it's an fpo um whether it's an assault or a domestic battery uh if they violate those and that that could even stem from a text message from the uh, suspect, they can go to jail on that. Chief Gibbons, uh, is there a need for any changes in legislation in regards to domestic situations? I received a text that said that uh, the person, uh, Matt Miller, texted me and said, I read where the Spring Mills shooting investigation showed threats had been made prior to the shooting. We seem to hear that a lot in domestics. Do we need to have any better rules, laws, or legislation in place to help prevent uh, victims and protect them from additional uh, domestic violence once a situation has already been established with a threat. Yeah, and and whether that's le- legislature or not, <clears throat> the, these these people that are victims of dom- domestic violence really need to be kept an eye on. Uh, we have one social worker, Noel, uh, who's been with us for the past year, and we've just hired on two more social workers. So this is going to be this is going to really assist us not only with the mental uh, illness cases or the um, drug usage cases that we have downtown, but also domestic violence cases, you know, sexual assault cases, domestic assault, domestic battery cases. Um, They they just need to be 
better taken care of or kept an eye on. Because a, a suspect is not going to make it known that he's after somebody if he doesn't want to. Now, these are just cases to where we know that there's been threats. Um, and, and I haven't seen these threats. The same goes with this guy from Washington. Apparently, he was making some threats over social media, which I had no idea. I didn't even know that this girl was in town. I wouldn't have known that this girl was in town. But um, as far as legislature goes, I think that they're fairly well protected. We just need to keep a better eye on them while they are being protected. Um, and it's the time of year where you, where you really need to keep an eye on your neighbor. It's not just law enforcement's responsibility to keep an eye on a victim. It's family, it's friends, it's coworkers. It's, it's everybody needs to play a part in this. When I was in, in uh, college as a younger man, uh, I took a police community relations course. It was taught by a fellow who is retired from the city of Pittsburgh Police Force. And for his duty station, he was on the north side of Pittsburgh, which was known as the war zone. It was the, it was the toughest place for a police officer to be uh, stationed. And he said he went his entire career without ever unholstering his weapon in the most difficult district in the city of Pittsburgh. I have in my neighborhood probably six police officers, uh, different departments. Some are federal, some are state, some are local kind of uh, folks, county, whatever. And two of them, and they're both relatively young men, two of them have already taken a life in the line of duty to protect others. Are we just living in more violent times now, Aaron, than we were 50 years ago? Definitely from 50, 50 years ago, and I just think the mentality is so much different. Uh, the mentality, the propensity for violence and the mentality for violence now is just more more extreme. People, there, there's just too many people that just don't care, I, and, and I truly believe that. And I, I could very well say that I haven't, I haven't pulled my holster or my weapon out of my holster, but I have. Um, now, have I shot anybody? No, I most certainly haven't. But I assure you that had these officers on Friday not pulled their service weapons, either one of our officers would have been dead or the victims would have been uh, dead, 100 percent. I think it's just the mentality that we live in now. Chief, thanks so much for your time this morning. I greatly appreciate it. Yeah, I appreciate everybody. And uh, you guys have a wonderful holidays. We have, I just wanted to put out that we do have the uh, – down at the roundhouse this next weekend from i believe it's 11 to 5 they have a big event going down merry merriment uh it's a christmas event that they're having at the roundhouse this weekend very nice chief appreciate it thank you thank you have a good day